Welcome educators and parents. I'm Rosa, the founder of Teaching for Success. And in today's episode, we're going to explore how to make reading an engaging and enriching experience in the classroom. It's important to remember that young people at all literacy levels can enjoy reading, but by enhancing their literacy skills, we can make the experience even more enjoyable for them. One key aspect of fostering a reading culture is developing comprehension and reading strategy skills. These skills help students engage meaningfully with the text they want to read. The goal is to encourage students to become interested in text, collaborate with each other, work towards their reading goals, and remain curious about books. In the classroom, it's essential to create a reading environment that supports students in selecting just right books that match their reading level. This not only enhances their reading experience, but also helps them feel successful on their reading journey. To establish a reading culture, we can incorporate various strategies across the curriculum, such as dedicated reading time, meaning we set aside time for daily reading for pleasure in the classroom. Independent reading time should be one of the periods or a period incorporated in your classroom schedule daily. Creating a routine around reading helps make it a part of students' daily lives. Provision of comfortable reading spaces. Ensure that they are comfortable and accessible spaces for reading in school. Remember, students don't need to be confined to their desks to read comfortably, to understand their reading, or to enjoy reading. Students can sit on a bean bag, on a bench, on a mat, or they can sit inside the classroom or outside the classroom as long as they're being monitored through their reading experience. Diverse reading material is very important. Make a wide variety of interesting reading material available. Different children, different students have different interests when it comes to reading. This includes diverse genres, authors, and topics. So it's important to cater to a wide range of interests when you're providing reading material for your students. Also, you can encourage students and staff to recommend books to one another. Students will most likely be inclined to read a book that has been recommended by their peer rather than by their teacher. So, Personal recommendations can spark curiosity and interest in reading. Organize events such as author visits, book sales, role play, and readers' theater to create excitement about reading. Remember, reading comprehension is a vital component of promoting a reading culture. Some students can decode or read words, but struggle still to deeply understand a text they're reading, or to read with a critical mindset. To help students make meaning of what they're reading, consider using comprehension strategies like the following. For example, you can encourage students to ask questions throughout the reading process, before reading, during, and after reading. For example, they can ponder the meaning of a book title, why has the author used this title for the book? If you read the title, what does it tell you about what the book may be about? What is going on in the illustrations on the cover of the book? Or relate personal experiences to the characters in the book. Cultural relevance is important. Please, please ensure that the books you provide are culturally responsive and relevant. Growing up as a young child, I used to wonder why they used to say all is for orange. First of all, 
oranges when I grew up were green or yellow or a combination of green and yellow. I had never seen orange oranges because so I couldn't understand why our teachers used to say, oh, for orange, it should be G for green oranges or something like that. It just didn't make any sense to me. Not until I was able to travel to Europe and actually see orange oranges. And then finally, it made sense to me why they used O for oranges to teach the alphabet. Another example is when I would read books about different seasons like winter and summer and spring. That didn't make any sense to me because in Uganda, it was either the rainy season or the dry season. There's nothing wrong with learning about other cultures, about other countries, about different uh, weather around the world. But it's so important as well to include books for our students to read that are relevant to them. I didn't understand why the fall season is called the fall season, right? I didn't understand that it's called the fall season in countries that experience winter because during that season, the leaves dry up, the green leaves dry up, they become yellow, or sometimes they go from green to red or orange or yellow or brown, and then they shrivel up, dry up, and fall off the trees so that the whole of the winter, most of the trees, unless they're coniferous trees, the trees do not have leaves on them. So fall, meaning the leaves fall off. It's a season where the leaves fall off the trees. Didn't make any sense to me in Uganda. Okay, so students should also be able to see themselves in the characters and situations in the book. For example, students should be able to read about books uh, of uh, with pictures of children of the same skin color as them with um, homes that look like theirs, with schools that look like theirs, um, with um, characters that have similar life experiences to them, you know? And students should be able to see maybe people with different abilities, like disabled people in a book. Those should also be included in the books that we read to let uh, our students who are disabled know that they're also important, they're also relevant, and their stories also appear in books. Including books by African authors as well can be particularly meaningful as they can better, readers can better understand the culture and experiences of the authors. Making inferences can help readers improve their comprehension. Uh, for instance, they can infer a character's personality or interest from the details provided in a text. For example, you can have a person who uh, goes to different places in the world, is interested in different cultures uh, of different peoples in the world. Uh, that person uh, we can infer is a hodophile, which is someone who loves to travel, you know, to different places. Okay. Reader's theater is another very, very interesting way of making reading engaging in the classroom. Now, this is a dramatic presentation of written works in script form that can be written by the students which is more engaging and can engage readers who have an interest, especially in careers in radio or voiceovers or animated movies. It's a fun way and an engaging way to build oral communication skills as well. It's important as well to encourage students to use their prior knowledge to predict and connect with the text. This personal connection can improve understanding and relatability. For example, I had a colleague who was very perplexed uh, as she read uh, about gardening. 
she read about gardening from a book and they were talking about gardening tools and the students had no idea what a rake was now obviously if your students have never seen grass being raked right if they've never seen a rake right then the text that they're reading is not going to have meaning to them so it's so important before you present a text to students to make sure that you build their prior knowledge discuss unfamiliar vocabulary with them show them visuals in video form or picture form or uh, illustrative form so that they have a better understanding of what they're reading so we can do that by combining videos pictures and other visuals with explanations of these unfamiliar words in text to build their vocabulary and enhance their comprehension lastly making connections helps encourage students uh, to make connections between their lived experiences and other texts either texts they've read or make uh, connections between their own lives and current events and this makes reading more engaging and relevant to their lives so in school sometimes we refer it as a text to self connections where the student connects what they're reading to their own lives and things similar things that they've gone through or text to text where a student connects what they're reading with something else they've read before or maybe seen on TV in a show on social media or text to world which is a connection between the student and current events this makes reading more engaging and relevant to their lives for older readers in secondary and tertiary education book clubs and literature circles can be excellent tools to promote engagement with reading these settings provide space and time for students to apply the strategies they've learned in the classroom to a novel or book of their choosing they can hold meaningful discussions analyze texts more deeply and also learn from each other so pick one or more of these strategies that I have mentioned in this episode to promote student engagement, critical thinking skills, vocabulary enrichment, and making reading a fun and interactive experience for the learners in your institution of education. I hope that you've enjoyed our reading culture series and please stay tuned for more exciting topics from Teaching for Success. Thank you for joining us on this journey to promote a lifelong love for reading.